Hello everyone. Welcome back. We are the Purdue Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, also known as Purdue IEEE Student Branch. About IEEE. IEEE is an international organization with 419,000 members in over 160 countries. There are 124,000 student members and 3,400 student branches. And all IEEE members are united under the central oath of fostering technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. So although IEEE is internationally known for its journals and conferences, our objectives at Purdue and Branch is kind of more member centric. With 11 subcommittees, IEEE has a place for everyone, regardless of major, who wants to make a change in the world. So our technical committees offer a low risk environment where you can develop real life skills with hands on projects. So our technical committees have built vehicles that move through air, water and land. And they have written AIs, built prosthetics and built wireless communicators. And our cornerstones committees uh, allow you to make new friends, network with faculty and industrial representatives. Uh, learn new skills and engage with the community. In the past, our Cornerstones committees have held workshops, game nights, industry talks, and have demoed at the Children's Museum. More about our committees. Hello everyone. I'm Nathan Broman, and I'm the project lead on the Purdue Aerial Robotics team. I'd also like to introduce our team captain, Alex Zhang. Every year, the Purdue Aerial Robotics team builds an unmanned aircraft. This picture shows the team with our aircraft after a successful test flight last spring. Our goal is to compete in the AUVSI SUAS competition in June 2021. This picture shows the last time the team competed back in 2018. The aerial robotics team is comprised of three smaller subteams. The first subteam is the aeromechanical team, which builds the physical aircraft. Aeromech designs airplane parts using SolidWorks CAD software, fabricates parts from composite materials, and of course, flight tests the competition aircraft. A new task this semester is to design an unmanned ground vehicle that needs to be dropped out of the airplane and land safely. Our second subteam is the electrical team. Electrical's first task is to integrate the autopilot system into the aircraft. This involves setting up hardware, designing custom flight control algorithms, and flight testing a dummy airplane every week. Electrical's second task is to take pictures from the aircraft and transmit them back to the ground station. This involves working with a custom radio setup. The third subteam is the computer vision subteam, also known as the software team. Software designs image recognition algorithms to identify targets in the pictures taken from the airplane. The targets must be identified and described according to their shape, color, and the text written on them. This task involves programming using Python, as well as training algorithms and using machine learning. To join the aerial robotics team, please join our Slack channel at part .com. There you will find updates about team meetings this week. If you have further questions, you can also contact our team captain, Alex Zing, or myself, and our emails are listed at left. And over the next week, we should be coming out with announcements about the team's activity 
and about when all of our meetings will be. So please come to those and we hope to see you there. I'll wait a few more seconds for you to get this information down. All right, this concludes the Aerial Robotics Team's presentation. I hope to see you all at our meetings. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Eric, I'm the chair of IEEE Computer Society, here to talk to you a little bit about our club. So, what do we do? We do a lot of cool projects. Uh, last semester we had a Seganography project. We're looking to do some stuff with Arduino, and in the past we've done some things with machine learning. We have a lot of opportunities to win cool stuff. Uh, we also do events and tours and such. We'll have to follow the COVID guidelines this semester, but in the past we've had a supercomputer tour, as you can see there in the bottom right. And uh, we've done movie nights, and in the past we've done programming competitions, and had professor and some guest talks before. So here is an example of something that we did last year. Uh, last fall, we did a machine learning project with Pong, that's our paddle on the right, and we wrote a single layer neural network in Python uh, to teach you how to play Atari Pong, and that's kind of the finished product over there uh, that one of our members made. This last spring, we had a steganography project uh, that was also written in Python, and it's pretty much taking a message and encoding it in an image by using the significant bits at the end. And so here's an example of it done with Mitch Daniels. As you can see, very small. The more significant the bits that are using code information, the more the image is distorted. So there at the bottom, it's very distorted, whereas the top, the picture's almost the exact same. Uh, in the past two, we've done a little like style transfer project with art, also using neural networks. Uh, this was from my freshman spring. Uh, and obviously we took the picture on the right and the style of the picture on the left and kind of combined them. And that's that finished product in the middle. So if you're interested in our club uh, coming out and interested in tech and computers and such, our info session will be Thursday, September 7th in double E 317. And so, be there. Thank you, guys. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Donahue. I am the chair of the Engineering and Medicine and Biology Society, or EMBS for short. I'll be referring to it as EMBS for the remainder of this presentation. Essentially, what I'm going to go through is who we are, what we do, what our goals and aspirations are, and why we do what we do. So first off, what we do. Our focus is primarily just to design and build devices in the met biomedical engineering field and host a series of workshops to enhance the general knowledge of BME. This essentially boils down to our primary goal, which is to better human living through technology and understanding. We accomplish this through a variety of ways, the primary one being our yearly projects. In the past, our big project has been the navigational aid for the blind, which was a headphone-like device that the person would wear over their head. Uh, it would then, through ultrasonic sensors and circuit design, give them live updates of their environment. Uh, this was then redesigned in the following fall to be a neck mounted device that sat over the chest. This had the advantage of being aimed at where the person was walking rather than where they were looking. And also housed a series of additional controls such as volume and whatnot. In the future, or sorry, Last spring, we had the physical mobility aid, which is going to be our new project in the future. This is an exosuit design worn over the person's body. It's meant for people with muscular dystrophy, the elderly, Parkinson's, essential tremors. The goal of this to be giving back fine motor control and augment strength in a minimal fashion so people can, for instance, carry groceries in from the house more easily. Our plans for this year are to continue working in the exosuit. This might be slightly minimized due to the pandemic and having to work mostly online, but it will still be an intellectual challenge and a fun project to work on for those who choose to get involved. Our big competition is BME Ideas. This is in the spring. 
and a couple of the workshops that are a little bit in deliberation still, some of them have been finalized and more information will be given on that in our info session, is CAD electrical and our prosthetics in the spring. The prosthetics is one that's dependent on how Purdue progresses forward with everything, but we're hoping that things turn out positively and we're planning for that in the spring still. So an overview of our basic structure is there is the chair and below them is the mechanical lead, electrical lead, and programming lead. They all kind of work going collectively. This is just an overview of like basically a simplified version of everything. Along with the chair is several other people involved such as like social lead, industrial liaison, many many people comprise the upper level of things as well as the leads also take part in that as well. So this isn't meant to be like a uh, the chair it's above everyone else. Everyone kind of works collectively. This is just a simplified view of what's going on. With that, there's also a ton of opportunity for upward advancement. We're not a very large group. We're a very small group for the moment, and we're hoping to kind of expand from there. But being a small group, we have a couple of advantages. We're a very like intimate group. We're very chummy. We have fun with each other. We joke around. We also all have a collective passion for what we're doing. On top of that, there is a lot of opportunity for upward advancement. So if you're someone who's looking to get into a leadership role or wants to try out your leadership skills, we're a great group for that. You can see how things work out if things don't work out too well. No problem, things can change up in the next semester or the next year. And yeah, generally, it's just a fun, fun environment. It's very much driven based on who's involved. So if a lot of people like what we're doing, there's gonna be a greater effort forward. And I think that's a very positive environment to be in. If you are interested in joining us, we have an online info session that is going to be uh, Thursday, September 10th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. The link is in the slides that will be provided. And yeah, if you're passionate about the group, I would encourage you to join it. There's no obligation coming and checking us out. We're a fun group. We like to have fun and we'd like to see you there. So. Hello everyone, I'm George, the chair of MTDS, which stands for Microwave Theory and Technique Society. So what we do, we deal with microwaves, more specifically communications. So we use microwaves, basically e -E -I -E -M -E, everyone use microwaves, um, because modern technology and basic communication is based on EM waves, so thus microwave and high frequency waves. Um, here's our meeting time, which is info session. If you come, you can hear more in detail. And what do we do? We do some FM radio amplifier or trans uh, transmitter and receiver. So basically you build your own radio or walkie talkie. We build a wireless energy harvester. So basically it just absorb your Wi-Fi energy and charge up maybe some tiny little things like a heartbeat detector, a wristband that's just detect your blood pressure sort of thing, and infrared sensor that's also, hey, light is a EM wave, so we also deal with that. And so more specifically, we our activities are mostly workshops and projects. Um, we explain things if you don't know them, of course, we do tutorials on topics and this semester is special, we are all online. So projects are mostly simulation and online design. And then we will hold a lot of kind of talks um, just to introduce a very basic and fundamental of um, microwave se theory to you. So if you're new, don't worry, we'll teach you everything. Um, and for later in the semester or maybe next semester, we're gonna build something that we designed this year. So come to the info session if you're interested. Thanks. Hey guys, uh, my name is Rov. I'm the president for IT Racing at Purdue. And today I'll be talking to you a little bit about um, what the team is about and what um, our semester plans are gonna be. So uh, to begin with, our goal is to basically implement modern automation technologies into go-karts, which means um, in simple words, we're gonna build a self-driving go-kart. Um, right now we have Two carts. One is a driver control cart and one is an autonomous cart. We are pretty much done with the driver control cart and um, we have only a few things left like installing RPM sensors and a small display for the driver. But apart from that, our main focus is going to be on the autonomous cart. 
uh, we'll be using things like uh, OpenCV, um, computer vision and mach machine learning and program that into the NVIDIA's Jetson board, uh, the NVIDIA Jetson TX2 and um, use that to steer the car. Um, we have events like karting trips where we go go-karting and uh, track days where we test our cart but because of restrictions this might not be possible um, I'll keep you up uh, I'll keep you updated on that uh, the upcoming projects as I said was uh, mainly focused on the autonomous cart where we will be um, trying to figure out simulations which means uh, testing our code on a simulated version of the cart rather than on the actual cart itself before we were to program it directly onto the cart um, we'll be doing some video analysis for the steering and uh, small projects on the driver go kart, as I had mentioned. Um, the info session is going to be on September 3rd at 7 p.m. Uh, you can come there in person if you like or using Discord. Um, the Discord links can be found in the description of the video. And um, yeah, I hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Grant Geyer, and I'm captain of the ROV committee. Before you may ask, why you want to join ROV, you may ask what one is. ROV stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle, and they're used in a variety of marine areas, such as exploration, inspection, taking samples, recording data, making repairs, and more. The team competes at the MATE International ROV Competition, and to do that, we make a brand new ROV from scratch, um, so we can innovate uh, and iterate on all the designs for, for it. This allows everyone to make something new and different and contribute in their own unique way and to learn a lot doing so. Our goals this year are to complete ROV X12 from last year, which was stopped in mid-production, and to introduce new designs into each subsystem. The team is split into mechanical, electrical, software, and administrative subteams. The software team is in charge of writing the control software, computer vision, sensor reading, tools control, and pilot interfaces, in the listed frameworks and languages. The mechanical team uses SOLIDWORKS to design tools, enclosures, frame, buoyancy, and more, and then realizes their designs with CNC manufacturing and 3D printing. The electrical team designs the circuit boards using Eagle, then solders them and writes any associated embedded C and goes with them. These are a lot of practical hands-on skills that really help students in their careers as they progress. So, if you're interested in joining, you can come to our info session Wednesday, September 9th at 6.30 p.m. The room still needs to get approved by SAO, but it will hopefully be in ME 1130. You can also attend online via the IEEE Q&A Discord in the ROV voice channel. We're open to everyone. We do have an application for new members just to keep the team to a manageable size and to make sure that everyone there has a chance to do valuable work. The application can be found on the ROV join page, and it's due two days after the info session Friday night. We encourage you to come to the in-person info session if you feel comfortable, because it allows us to get to know you better. Thank you, and I hope to see you all there. Hello, my name is Duhan Erola. I am the Industrial Relations Chair for I Purdue IEEE this semester. One of the things that we will be doing in industrial relations is growing our corporate relations. Some of the corporate relations that we have currently are with Purdue Engineering, Bechtel, DigiKey, and PESC, and many more as you can see on the slide. What we will be learning in industrial relations is how to speak to companies and how to create professional contacts. So essentially this all bonds together with networking. We will be growing our networking skills in industrial relations. We will also be learning how to acquire funds through corporate sponsorships. If you all are interested in industrial relations, the info session is on Wednesday, September 2nd from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time on Discord, and the link is down below if you are interested. I hope to see you all there. Hello, my name is Hannah Hatfield, and I am the Growth and Engagement Chair for IEEE. Um, growth and Engagement has two parts, growth and engagement. So on the growth side, we promote IEEE by going out and finding new members for our committees. So we go out, we speak to people during demonstrations, we go to classes and talk in the classrooms, and we hand out flyers and many other things to go out and get our name out there. And then after we've gotten all the people that we want in the committees, we do engaging events. So we go out into the community and basically help the community. So 
A few of the events we've done is Engineering Tomorrow and National Engineering Day. But due to COVID this year, we won't be able to do those events, so we're going to have to go through a little bit of a challenge to try a thing up virtual science events. But if you're interested in doing anything like that, please come to my info session Thursday, September 10th in Double E at 157 at 6.30 p.m. Hey, my name is Angelo. Uh, I'm the head of the learning committee this year, and I'm here to tell you about a few of the opportunities we have for you. Uh, so every year we work to put together a variety of different technical and soft skill oriented workshops. Uh, so on the screen right now are just a few of the technical workshops we're putting together for you. Uh, and I think my face actually covers Ross. Uh, but here are some of the upcoming workshops we've got in the month of September. So we've got an intro to Eagle coming up. Uh, for circuit design, intro to SolidWorks for CAD, and an intro to Git slash GitHub. Uh, the intro to Eagle and intro to SolidWorks are actually some in-person sessions that we're organizing. Uh, we're waiting for room reservations, so uh, be on the lookout in your email when we do get those confirmed. But we're also putting together uh, some separate virtual workshops the days after to accommodate remote students. Um, and the intro to Git slash GitHub workshop is actually fully remote. Uh, some of the future workshops we're trying to put together are soldering, Python, and 3D printing, and actually I think my face covers React.js as well. But uh, all these workshops are open to anyone, um, IEEE member or non-IEEE member, uh, but an advantage as an IEEE member, uh, if you pay your dues, you can actually attend workshops that uh, may have some sort of associated cost like soldering or uh, an Arduino uh, for free. Uh, so that's just some incentive to actually join. Um, uh, but if you're not just interested in coming to workshops and you want to help plan and organize some of them, uh, we've got a learning planning committee. Uh, our first info session is Monday, September 14th from 6 to 6.30 on Discord. Um, it's a really great opportunity to fill in some of the gaps that your core classes might not cover. Uh, and it's, it's just a whole lot of fun. Um, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, join the learning uh, Discord channel on the recruitment Discord and uh, give me a shout. Thanks. Hello everyone, um, I'm Jerome. I'm the head of the social committee uh, this semester. Um, so attending social events is a great way to network and uh, meet fellow IEEE members um, and people just across the School of Engineering in general. Um, so in the past, uh, we've done a lot of in-person events uh, specifically geared towards uh, IEEE members or um, we've partnered with other student organizations in the past such as uh, HKN or um, ASME to name a couple. Um, so, so this year uh, we're going mostly virtual to accommodate everyone who um, isn't available to meet in person. Um, this past Friday we had our first uh, virtual game night where a few of us played uh, Jackbox games remotely over uh, Discord. Um, so some future events um, that we're planning include a remote uh, new member meet and greet and alumni mixer, uh, a virtual IEEE day in October, um, and either an in-person or virtual bar crawl. Um, so yeah, uh, if you're interested in um, joining the social committee to plan events, um, our information session is uh, September 6th at 5 p.m. Uh, through Discord. Um, so that's about it. Um, I hope you all have a great semester and thank you. Hope you're excited about joining us. So to join us, uh, please pay annual dues. And these dues will help fund uh, IEEE events throughout the year, and they will also pay for uh, disinfectants and PPE this year. Uh, so annual dues are $15 per year for on-campus students and $7 per year for students who are fully online or students who just want to attend meetings and events fully virtually. <clears throat> and if classes go online early, any excess dues will be forwarded to the next year. Uh, if you'd want to sign up for an international IEEE membership, those are $32 per year, but they're not strictly needed for Purdue IEEE membership. But if you were forced to pay it and were a grad student, uh, you're exempted uh, from our local dues. You can pay through cash uh, at W14, which is our office, or you can pay through Venmo or PayPal. And instructions on how to do that are found on our website. Here are our committee info sessions. Uh, for more details, please visit our website and uh, check the description down below. You can also contact us 
by visiting us in W14. You can go to our website, you can email us, or you could join our Slack. Hope to see you all soon.